Mr. Malik, coming straight to you, both establishment and the judiciary pretty much seemed to be at the same frequency regarding the PTI. And the same frequency provided a lot of potential and a cushion to the ruling coalition, an enhanced level of confidence, I would say. How do you look at this latest development from the judiciary when it comes to the uh, reserve seats for the Sunni Etihad Council? How is this going to impact the ruling coalition? No, um, uh, I, I think I would disagree with you uh, on the issue of uh, judiciary and army being on the same page. Actually, it's the other way around. I see, I see a very clear pushback by superior judiciary towards establishment and the government. Otherwise, otherwise you wouldn't have had this decision you just referred to about uh, special seats and suspending this Peshawar High Court decision. Uh, then first we had the six-member bench, uh, uh, six uh, judges of the Islamabad High Court. The way that matter has been taken up by the superior uh, judiciary by, by the Supreme Court. Then even on, on a matter of Dharnabad, uh, Faizabad Dharna case uh, commission, inquiry commission, the weight has been absolutely denied, uh, thrown out by the Supreme Court. That shows an absolute lack of faith in, in the executive and the interagencies that were interested to carry out that probe. So I see more in common right now. I wouldn't say more in common with PTI, mm -hmm. but definitely not in consonance with the government. In fact, I think PTI feels that it's only recourse the relief it's going to get is from the superior judiciary, despite the fact that Imran Khan Saab had uh, directly targeted chair, uh, uh, chief of uh, chief justice of Pakistan and also chief justice of Islamabad High Court. Mm -hmm. Despite that, so we are in a, we are in a very interesting flux here. Uh, you talked about um, the impact it's going to have with the budget coming in up. Uh, let's be very clear: the government does even with these special seats. Uh, and uh, reserve seats uh, matter going in the limbo. The government still has the majority, simple majority, to pass legislation. The pa passage of uh, budget is not going to be an issue. Passage of things in Senate is not going to be an issue. The only issue was with the new, uh, with the sort of tampered um, structure right now. Their attempt to make constitutional changes, yeah. they have been stalled. And that is an interesting development in another way. Because the bench that uh, gave the decision, the judges, they, it was headed by Justice Mansoor Ali Shah and, and two other judges, Justice Atta Manila was in there. So they are, they are deemed to be not in the Chief Justice's camp. Mm -hmm. And the talk that was the gov from government quarter was coming out was about, you know, giving a three-year tenor to, to Chief Justice of High Courts and, and uh, Supreme Court. So that meant that Justice Faiz Issa would have continued instead of retiring this year in November. He will continue till for another three years. So I, I think more than uh, giving relief to uh, PTI, it's the internal tiff and the internal division with the judiciary also that with one with one stone they've killed two uh, two birds actually. You know the proverbial things. Mm -hmm. They have blocked the government. The government cannot make constitutional amendments. So when it can't make constitutional amendments, it can't. Uh, muck around with the, with the current, ju current judicial appointment system and all that. And at the same time, they've given relief to PTI also. So there are a lot of multi things going on. Nothing is as simple as it seems. It's wheel within wheels. Camps within judiciary are settling score with each other. You know, like when this uh, six judges thing came up. Yeah. There's a very firm opinion in Islamabad that six judges do tend to agree with one judge sitting in the Supreme Court who vehemently disagrees even publicly with the Chief Justice. So this internal, the d dynamics of internal differences between the job judiciary, then establishment versus the, the judiciary, then judiciary versus, you know, everybody else. So you can't put anything in one perfect square. There are more than one factors influencing everything. But I, 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 I think that right now, we won't see any dialogue. There's no desire on, on part of executive to have a dialogue with, with PTI because very quickly, I've, I've taken too much time, but very quickly I'd like to point out, Imran has popular support, so he doesn't need any help on that. Imran has a government in, in KP, so he has a power base. What he needs is his freedom. And his freedom does not suit anyone. If he walks out today, it will be serious political curtains for PMLN and um, People's Party. They can't, they can't carry his political weight. They can't eliminate him politically. If he walks out today, it doesn't go in the interest of PPP, doesn't go in the interest of PMLN, and definitely doesn't go in the interest of 
uh, the establishment. So who is going to negotiate and why? So I think we're going to keep seeing this happening. I think the only time that the establishment may be forced to enter into dialogue is when they feel that they cannot hold him in jail anymore. All right. And he might get judicial reprieve. But the question is, will Imran talk at that time to them? I seriously doubt, seriously doubt that also. Because Imran Khan also has a tendency that when he's riding high, he also doesn't look down. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going in circles for a while now.